Kind of happy I sold one of my inventions. Isn't that great? I didn't have to patent it. It's kind of good. Selling one of my inventions. When's the last time I sold one of my inventions? A while back. The uh, party involved may end up patenting it and uh, making a bunch of money. But uh, I guess I guess that's okay. <laughs> Sorry, that was slightly off topic. How are you doing this fine evening? <clears throat> Science today is far less about the quest for truth and uh, logic and what uh, you know, falls in line with Occam's razor. As the Pythagoreans and the Platonists and even the Aristotelians adamantly, you know, advocated people do, instead of become a bit of a religion, the most common term used other than the word quantum, which doesn't actually refer to anything found in nature because Oddly enough, and it's not odd at all, people like Tesla, Faraday, Charles Proteus Steinmetz, James, Ma James Clerk Maxwell, Oliver Heaviside, they created enormous copious volumes about field theory, electricity, electrostatics, dielectricity, and enormous amounts of math without ever once using the word quantum, which doesn't refer to anything in nature, but this video is not about quantum. That's currently the the big religious term, because modern science is far more a religion than it is a quest for truth and logic, because you can actually actually uh, have accurate observations and reproducible experiments, but your descriptions are wholly inaccurate of what's going on. There have been a lot of famous discoveries like uh, um, uh, wave uh, particle duality, a phenomena which is not a duality at all, and um, uh, the uh, Nobel Prize for which uh, Einstein won his uh, explanation of what was going on is completely inaccurate. Um, anyway, getting on to waves, the second most common used term by modern science. Now, it depends on where you look at online, and I've actually uh, never gone this deep into looking at all the various uh, dictionary. Now, some say that the word uh, wave is an intransitive uh, verb. Well, that's nice. Some will tell you that uh, the word wave is a noun. And I, I'm not really interested in word etymology or what uh, dictionaries uh, do say. Some woman will tell you flat out uh, that uh, the word wave is a verb. Of course, they base this upon how it's used. But in regarding field theory, the word wave is not a noun. Yeah, wave is what something does. Kind of like these flickering uh, digital flames on my computer are waving. Yeah. You say they're waves of flames, right? There's no such thing as a wave. Yeah? There's no such thing as a shadow. Shadow is conceptual reification, the same way we conceptually reify. This is one of the humongous pitfalls of language. I know seven languages. I translate ancient Pali. I uh, translate and have written several articles in a few books of uh, ancient Greek. Uh, one of them is uh, quite popular. My most popular book is uh, my book on uh, magnetism. If you actually ask, you know, say 10 of the most intelligent, and by intelligent I use that term uh, loosely, intelligent scientists today, say, well, you know, let's discuss waves. You know, scientists love to talk about waves. And we're talking about uh, field theory. And you say, they will engage in this retroductive, uh, fallacious um, uh, conceptual reification, which is what they do regarding waves. Well, what is a wave? Well, we're referring to electromagnetic phenomena. Oh, so when you're talking about waves, you're referring to the phenomena of fields, right? Well, yes, ultimately that's what we're talking about. But there's no branch of science that's ever defined the word field. Now, if you go to uh, Wikipedia or you go to uh, any website and uh, look up the definition of field, you'll get a lot of uh, fancy uh, descriptions, but you'll actually get no explanation of what a field is. And you won't find this anywhere online, but what a field is and simple is an ether perturbation modality, just like ice, water, and steam are different pressure and temperature modalities of the hydrous oxygen molecule. Yeah, two hydrogen atoms, one oxygen atom, that fascinating molecule which gives definition to life and, of course, is the, the by the way, water is a polar molecule, is the polar molecule that is required for consciousness and empirical life to be manifest. Anyway, getting back to waves, 
or wave itself, they have conceptually reified this and given definition and reification to something that does not exist. A shadow is not a thing. A shadow is an absence of light. However, a shadow is a noun in the dictionary, and I'm not interested in dictionary definitions. I'm not interested in truth. If I were interested in uh, dictionary definitions or how Merriam-Webster's or Oxford uh, Dictionary define the term wave, depending on how it's used, and you know, some say it's an intransitive verb, some say it's a noun, some say it's a, you know, it is a verb, just a flat-out verb, then I would uh, be engaging in sophistry. Not interested in arriving at the truth. I don't truth. I don't know if you know the definition of sophistry. But all of this is coming down to the explanation of light. There's not a single branch of science today that actually understands what light is. Sure they do. It's photons and it's a wave particle duality. If we actually analyze the terms that are used by modern day science and the stuff that I was taught, and I knew it was wrong, and you know, right from the get-go when they taught me this garbage in school. Other people gobbled it. Well, sure, that makes sense. You know, you're right. You're the teacher. You got a degree hanging on the wall. It's, are we not interested in ultimately the truth of what light is? I mean, are we not? Gamma radiation is high energy light. Ultimately, the fundamental particle is super high energy light. Radio is light. Visible light, of course, is what we conventionally think of as light. Ultraviolet, infrared, gamma, radio. It's a coaxial circuit. The speed of light is not even a speed because nothing is moving from point A to point B. When I speak and the vibrations are captured by this microphone and they're electronically and digitally captured in this camera that I'm recording to, am I emitting sound? Sure, you're emitting sound. Sound has a speed. Everybody knows the speed of sound. It's one of the first things we learned in elementary school. Is sound really a speed? Is it an emission? Because when I talk, I'm not emitting anything. I'm setting up a disturbance in the nitrogen and oxygen in the air. That disturbance is propagating as the hysteresis of the actual nitrogen and oxygen molecules allow it to be traced. So a speed of sound. It's not a speed because speed implies something is traveling from point A to point B. When you have a speed, you think of driving down the road at, say, 60 miles or however, 60 kilometers an hour, and you're, you're moving. It is something moving from point A to point B. Modern science, every branch of it, it's not my opinion, it's a fact, believes, and they forthrightly tell you that light is an emission, you know, like a light bulb emits light. Well, I no more emit anything when I'm speaking and causing a disturbance in a nitrogen and oxygen than this light that's uh, shining on my uh, bald, tattooed body is emitting anything. It's a disturbance in the medium. Sound, of course, the medium is the nitrogen and oxygen, right? The air. The medium, of course, is the ether. But, well, you can't use the word ether because modern science is atomistic. Greek Platonists and Pythagoreans actually defeated atomism many thousands of years ago, but everything moves in cycles, or we should say waves. And atomism is the current uh, hot flavor of belief system. And current science is far less about logic and seeking of truth than it is about a belief system. And it is a belief system. It is, a, it is a, an enclave of academia. Was your article peer-reviewed? When people say peer-reviewed, what they are technically saying is that I'm stupid. Oh, you just said peer-reviewed. Yeah, yeah. No, you said I'm stupid. The question an intelligent person or someone that likes wisdom would say is, does this follow? Does this fit into the grand picture of things? In a very simple way, because Mother Nature doesn't do math. Everything is pressure mediation. Everything is either force in motion, inertia and acceleration, or a hybrid thereof. Light is a coaxial circuit. Longitudinal rarefactions and compressions. Yeah, transverse electrical magnetic with hysteresis because anything that has a transverse cyclical component like light does, it has a hysteresis. That hysteresis is of the fact, and they call this electromagnetic retardation, which is what it's technically called, undergoes a temporal phase. An EM retardation is what it's called. And then, of course, we end up with the speed of light. The speed of light is the hysteresis of the ether against itself. But that hysteresis changes depending on what the medium 
what the, uh, the propagation or the disturbance of the coaxial circuit of the ether and the medium, of course, is the ether is occurring at. Sound actually changes in really cool, dense air versus extremely uh, hot air, which is very thin. Uh, the speed of light or the hysteresis of the propagation actually changes, and this is not my opinion, this is a fact. It's been measured over and over again. Light changes when it goes through glass, it goes through water, various different mediums. But it's not a speed, it's a rate of induction. There's no such thing as a wave. When you ask a scientist or a group of scientists, getting back to the 10 smartest scientists in the world, say, well, we're referring to waves, we're referring to fields. It's like, well, you've never defined a field. If you really want to stump a scientist, there's a lot of ways to stump them. Just, and it's okay not to know. The problem with knowing, or hubristically, assumingly knowing, is that you never go looking to the answers to things you, know, you think you already know the answer to. Nobody has ever gone looking you know, for their eyes, because they already know where they're at, right? No one's ever gone looking for their eyes. That's an incredibly insane statement. No one's ever gone, you know, looking for their, their, you know, their backside. They know right where it is. No one has ever gone looking for the truth to things that they think they are. Well, light is a wave-particle duality and it propagates speed of light, which is what we call C. And, uh, you know, it's comprised of photons. There's no such thing as a light particle. This conceptual reification is purely conceptual. There's no such thing as a light particle. That's ridiculous. That is atomistic at its very core. If we actually traveled back in time and talked to the ancient Platonists and the Pythagoreans and uh, said, well, you know, current science, and it's like, what's happening in the year 2020? Well, current science thinks that light is a bunch of particles. Now we would be laughing. It's like, well, that's just atomism. We destroyed that quite a long time ago. Atomism was destroyed by the intellectual uh, giants of uh, ancient Greece. Uh, Plotinus, Numenius, Syrianus, Iamblichus, Aristotle, Plato. Yet we have it again. Well, they must be right because we're able to create all these fantastical inventions like hard drives and computers and automobiles and rocket ships. That is not truth. That is invention. Invention and advancement of technology. Well, we have technological advancement. We don't actually have advancement of wisdom and understanding. Current science loves to describe things. Well, we've accurately described what's going on here. Yeah, but you didn't explain it. There's a nuance that you nor I were ever taught in school. These people love to describe things. Well, this is what's going on, and this is the math to prove it. Well, you just describe something. That's like giving you the calculation for how often a horse farts. Well, you just described it, but you, 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 you didn't actually explain what a horse is. What is the essa? What is the je ne sais quoi? What is the nature of a horse? This is where science completely fails. This is where math also fails. Math never, ever explains things. It defines things and it describes interactions and they're reproducible. Scientists don't believe in scientists. When I say scientists, I'm referring to modern scientists, not true Aristotelian or Platonic scientists because they're not interested in truth, they're interested in quantifying things. And modern science are not scientists by true sense, they're mathematicians. In the religion of mathematics, and I'm not against mathematics at all, I'm more interested in arithmetic, both uh, Platonic and Pythagorean arithmetic, which is different than math. They don't believe in anything. It's a belief system. Yeah, They don't believe, keyword belief, they don't believe in anything you can't count and quantify. You cannot count or quantify a field of itself, in itself, by itself. The four Maxwellian field equations only define a field with a vector over a period of time with a given result. Joules, watts, volts, amps, so on and so forth. That doesn't define what a field is. It doesn't explain a field at all. There is no such thing as a wave. There are no such thing as unicorns and leprechauns. But if I say unicorn, you immediately have a picture in your head of a one-horned horse, don't you? Within your head, you have this conceptual image of what a unicorn is, even though the unicorns don't exist. These people have created a belief system that is antithetical to logic, wisdom, and common sense. Mother Nature does not work that way. Light is not a wave-particle duality. A wave is not a thing. 
There's no such thing as a light particle, and there's no such thing as a duality in nature because duality implies inherent contradiction. And there are no inherent contradictions in nature. That is antithetical to logic, common sense, wisdom, and Occam's razor. Mother Nature doesn't work that way. I've humorously said that Mother Nature is a hippie chick wearing a hemp skirt with hairy armpits and muddy feet, and that's pretty close to what Mother Nature would be. She doesn't have a calculator. The only thing she understands is force and motion, inertia and acceleration centrifugal divergence, centripetal convergence, and she also understands capacitance, resistance, magnetic permeability, and dielectric permittivity, which is nothing different than saying pressure mediation. But there's no such thing as a wave. A wave is not a noun. You know, depending on how it's used in regards to other things, of course, you'll find various... Sure, it says right here, a wave is a noun. A wave of what? What if you said to somebody, I saw happiness on the street. I said, what do you mean? Who, who is happy that you saw? No, 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 I saw happiness on the street. What, what the hell are you, are you, are you smoking something? No, 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 I saw happiness. There's such a thing as happiness. There's something or someone that is happy. There's no such thing as a wave. A wave is not a thing in itself at all. There is no such thing as a wave. Sure it is. You see those flames waving? Right? Yeah, but what's waving? The reductionistic fallacy that modern science gets into, they paint themselves into a corner. So you, you think waves exist? Because all you guys talk about are quantum. Let's forget about quantum right now because that's a whole other video. And you talk about waves. Sure, we talk about waves a lot. Waves are very important. Waves of what? Waves. Waves of what? You talk about fields, right? Yes, 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 fields. Well, you never define a field. Well, yeah, fields are defined by Maxwellian field equations and... You know, reproducible results, you plug in the math, and, you know, we're able to send stuff to Mars and, uh, you know, lunar landers. And, yes, the math does work, and it's reproducible. And the descriptions are accurate because they are reproducible by anybody if you plug in um, the numbers. But that doesn't explain what the thing is in itself. What's the ESSA? There's no branch of science that's actually defined away, uh, what light is. Not a single one. But interestingly enough, all of quantum physics by their own definition, is based upon our understanding of light. That's not me talking, that's them talking. Let me repeat that because it's so incredibly important. All of quantum is based upon our understanding of light. Well, they don't understand light at all. Light's not an emission, it's not a wave, it's not a particle, it's not a duality. It doesn't move from point A to point B, and it doesn't have a speed. It has a rate of induction due to the EM retardation of the hysteresis of the transverse electrical magnetic of the coaxial circuit that is light. Until humanity actually understands what light is and how it works and why it works, there will never be any furtherment of the true explanation, not descriptions, because science is really good at descriptions and reproducible results. Human beings at their fundamental core don't want descriptions. Well, this is a device that's able to calculate. It's like, well, no, I, I want an explanation of what it is. Because I say, uh, you know, I spent a, bi a billion hours on a computer, but I've never taken one apart, and I used to build computers, by the way. So I've described everything about what a computer does, but I don't know what it is. You know, you give someone an accurate description, but descriptions are not explanations. Human beings, by and large, are fundamentally interested in the explanation of cosmic mechanics. Because it is sublime, it's divine, it's beatific, it's, it's amazing. It's like something you see at a 2010 a Space Odyssey, you know, where that grandiose music starts playing in the background and, you know, you feel like you're transported in space and time. True understanding is exactly like that, and wisdom is always its own reward. I'm not interested in descriptions. I'm interested in explanations. This is the difference between true philosophy, philosophia, the love of wisdom, and modern science as a religion or belief system. Because it will tell you what it believes light is, but it's never actually defined what light is. It never defined a field. I dare you, and I've done this many times in many videos, I dare you, prove you how smart you are or not. Go find an explanation of uh, what a field is. You won't find it anywhere online. Sure I can. I go to Wikipedia and it says right there what a field is. No, you can't. You'll find a description of the phenomena and the measurement of fields, but you will not find an explanation of what a field is anywhere on any website. Until science actually explains, not describes, 
vector period of time in the given result. That's like telling you how fast X, Y, Z horse can run. Well, we've clocked this horse before, and it can run 35 miles an hour. It's a black horse. It weighs 500 pounds. Well, that's a nice description, but I'm interested in an explanation of what a horse is. No branch of science has ever defined a field. Until they can do that, they can never define to you what light is, because they have not. And there is no such thing as a wave. And let me state again to you, because it's so incredibly important. All the geniuses of field theory, Maxwell, Faraday, Steinmetz, he uh, Tesla, Heaviside, on and on, these guys all together wrote endless volumes of extremely heavy stuff without once using the word quantum. Quantum itself refers to nothing of any phenomena in Mother Nature. I could read any sentence from any book and just insert the word quantum before every fifth word. Yeah? Where's the... I don't have my thing here. I had my little Oroya Sapientia over here, but... Just take any passage, uh, like off a jar of pickles, and every fifth word stick in the word quantum. There is no such thing as quantum. Quantum is not a field phenomena. There's no such thing as quantum. <laughs> Why am I the only person anywhere on the internet, and I've looked, trust me, or anywhere on YouTube that has mentioned this fact? Yeah. You tell me how Tesla, Faraday, Steinmetz, Oliver Heavy said, you know, these are the guys that gave us everything that we have today. They knew nothing of the word quantum. They didn't need it because the word quantum doesn't refer to anything, actually. And since it doesn't refer to anything, actually, <coughs> God other gods. It's, it's a religion. It's a belief system. We have the quantum interaction of the field that's occurring in the quantum uh, tunnel. We have a quantum tunneling effect that is occurring on a quantum level. And this quantum phenomena is occurring at an exorbitant speed that is uh, five levels above quantum. C this is... I read their books and articles. This is exactly how they talk and it doesn't refer to anything. It's a crazy belief system. Well, the math works on some things. Descriptions are not explanations. I can have reproducible results and have a completely insane, asinine explanation of what's going on. Even the ancient Egyptians, you know, they had incredible inventions, but they had really radical, insane, crazy, unbelievable, uh, you know, pseudo-religious, uh, nonsensical explanations of why it worked and the way it worked. Modern science is no different than that. I wish modern science was more about the quest for truth and understanding, you know, and following, uh, you know, the Platinian, Aristotelian uh, quest for logic and wisdom, but they're not. They're mathematicians, and uh, they are atomists, and they are uh, obfuscators. Anyway, I hope you like this video. I hope it at least made you think. I don't care if anybody agrees with me. I've talked with and read these people's articles for ages and they don't know what they're talking about it's easy to defeat them in five seconds and it's okay not to know the answer you know it's not about defeating them it's like don't pretend like you know something when you don't and these people don't they don't know what light is they never define a field and they cannot tell you what mother nature is fundamentally at its core they can't actually explain to you the mechanics of nature and it's okay if they would admit that but they don't well, what we have here is a quantum tunneling effect. You know, this is explained by quantum dynamics. Give me a break with that nonsense. Mother Nature is a hairy armpit chick with muddy feet. Nature does not work that way. It does not. It absolutely does not, and it cannot. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.